Hey, I'm going to start by just taking a look at my data here. I'm going to be using my step counts from my Fitbit. Um, it's got a nice list here. I can load some more data. Uh, I will probably throw out a few days if I know that I didn't wear my Fitbit all day. Uh, I won't throw out a day just because it's low, but to get the more, most accurate answer to my question about if, if I'm walking a different amount than the uh, normal male, uh, that I, I think the best way to answer that is to only count days where I was wearing my fist, Fitbit all day long. So that's going to be my data source. Next I'm going to get the actual spreadsheet I'll be using. So I'm going to right click here, uh, copy to, and wherever my spreadsheet is, um, let's just use this one here. Oh, should have opened target workbook there. Okay, open that workbook, click down here, um, maybe re rename this as something. And uh, next we have step three, research question. So my research question, um, I could ask, am I doing more steps than a normal, than the average person? Um, I know that males tend to have higher step counts than females. Um, so I think I'd probably rather compare myself to the male group. So I'm going to say, uh, Okay, um, because I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if I'm lower than or or higher than the average male. So I'm gonna leave that that option open here with the the two-tailed test. Okay, I need to figure out what the average number of steps is for males. So I'm gonna Google that. And I might click around a little bit. Let's see. I'd like to see some kind of study or, or some number that has some credibility here. So here we go. Study found that Americans only took 51.7. And If we, let me find the average for males here, just a second. Okay, um, looking through the tables of results here, and I think I found we have males had an average of 5,000. You know what? Let me compare it to my own age group. So 5,127 uh, for males in my age group. I'm going to use that. Uh, you don't need to find a published study, uh, but the, the more accurate the average you can get for the population you're comparing yourself to, the, the better. If you really can't find one at all, um, go ahead and just use an arbitrary cutoff, like do I walk more than 5,000 steps per day or, or some arbitrary number like that. Uh, the process itself will still hold up. So I'm going to adjust my research question. there. Um, and it's very, very common, by the way, to adjust your research question as you're analyzing your data or as you're working with data so that the data and the research question fit each other really well. Um, so my null hypothesis would be that I'm no different than the average male in my age group, so I'm walking 5,127 steps. Uh, the null hypothesis would be that my average per day is not that number. It might be higher, might be lower, meaning I have a two-tailed test here because I said 
different amount. I didn't say fewer than, I didn't say greater than, I just said a different amount, meaning that I'm, I'm working with a two-tailed test here. Okay, now I'm going to put in my actual data here. Uh, so this would be date and number of steps. Uh, for your first column, you may just have the numbers one through whatever. For example, if you played a uh, simple online game 30 times, this would just be one through 30 right here. Uh, but I do have the date information, so I'm going to include that there. So 8, 21, I took... Um, and then this next one, notice it's actually good I'm recording date here because uh, I had two separate times there where I was wearing the Fitbit, but I, I think I covered most of the day there, so that would be 4,759. Uh, and I am occasionally going to throw out a data point where I know that I didn't wear my Fitbit all day, so let me enter all this stuff. Okay, as I was inputting data here, I came across something I thought I'd share. So I was figured out that I I had these bars too. So I took a look at August 21st and had 6,629 steps, uh, which didn't match the number I had here for August 21st, 6,275. And I started looking into it a little bit more. Uh, there's the 20th, 5,358, which isn't even recorded here. And I finally made the discovery, which some of you may have noticed, that these are just for individual periods of activity. Like when I took a walk or when I played some sport or rode a bike or something. Uh, so this actually is not the data that I want. And because I do want this to be sincere, I'm going to go back through and actually use these uh, bars to put in the real data uh, here. So data quality is, of course, utmost importance if, if you want your study to actually mean anything. Okay, now we've got the data in there. Uh, not necessarily in the order that it all happened, but uh, I think it all looks good now. And let's see, I need to insert a histogram of my steps. I'm going to customize that data a little better. It's a little too much. Oh, okay. So here I'm realizing, I usually just click around a little bit, but my buckets here, number of steps, so I really need this number to be a lot bigger. There, 500, maybe even a little bigger. I'd like to have between 7 and 10-ish to see the, see the formation. Let me just change it to 1,000. Yeah, okay, I think that, that'll work there. Um... Just shrink this a bit, put it off to the side here. Um, so the question I'm asking myself now is, how close to normal distribution is this? Is, is it valid for me to actually use these T tests here? I mean, certainly Google Sheets will give me output, uh, but I have to have a little thinking behind the scenes to see if, if I even want that output. Um, I, I don't really have normally distributed data. On the other hand, the higher amounts are towards the middle. There's certainly a right skew here. Um, here's where I also want to take into account my sample size. So I have uh, 21 data points. Uh, so remember, 15 is, is kind of the cutoff. Like, if it's below 15, you'd really like to have pretty close to normal. Uh, the higher you get above uh, 40 and up, it, you can have the ugliest looking data s distribution imaginable, and, and the t-test is still perfectly valid. Um, so I, I'm sitting there kind of eh, a little bit iffy, um, but I'm going to 
insert a comment here. Um, And I really should call this the I'm really dealing with a T distribution here. Um, But since they're robust to non so I'm, I'm going to conclude that it's um, probably okay to use them. I am going to mention it in my limitations though um, as a minor limitation. Uh, and notice even if you get to a situation where you you think you are violating those assumptions um, it's it's okay for this assignment to continue uh, and in fact in in real practice you would probably continue anyway but you would make sure to mention that in the limitations so that the reader could decide how much they felt that affected your results okay so the results the fun part here um, my sample mean was 6,380 steps, um, which is higher than that that uh, average here. Uh, but I don't know if it's just the sample of days that I took, or is my walking practice in general is is that high? The population of all my days uh, at at this period in my life is that actually higher than the average? That's what we're going to find out here in these purple boxes. Uh, so this. 2.08 uh, that's actually going to be on both the negative side and on the positive side as my cutoffs those are my critical T's uh, I need to get beyond that to really say that that I have good e evidence um, that I am walking different and in this case more significantly more than the average male my age uh, my T statistic is 2.26 so my sample was uh, not by much, but it, it was past that cutoff that I had set for the, the alpha of 0.05. Um, so I would go ahead and reject the null, and and you can see that here with the p-value also. Um, so I would I would say that I'm rejecting the null. I, I have good evidence that I do take uh, more steps on average than the average male my age. Uh, what does this p-value mean? If if the reality is I just take exactly the same amount of steps as the males my age, then there's a 3.5% chance that I could get uh, a sample mean uh, a result uh, this extreme or, or even more, um, even if I am the same as the average. But because that percent is pretty low, I'm going to say that I reject the null and, and I have evidence that I do walk more than the normal amount. Uh, this confidence interval, um, I could use that to conduct the two-tailed test. It also tells me I'm pretty sure, 95% sure, that if assuming all else was fine with the study, uh, my average number of steps is somewhere between 5,200 and 7,500. Uh, and notice that even worst case scenario, 5,224, I'm higher than that average male my age. Uh, so this would be another way that I could know that I, I have evidence against the null hypothesis here. Uh, because it is a two-tailed test, I can use the confidence interval in that way. Um, so you should insert a comment describing all that I just said, and also the limitations here. Here my biggest limitations were it was not a random sample by any means of, of all the days that I've walked. 
uh, and also that population average was more of a sample average, was more of an estimate itself. Here's my comment.